Hey, Austin students. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. I thought I would throw at you a short teaser that's mainly focused on the distal foreleg. Uh, osteo tube primarily is focused in the cranium, intracranial vascular mobilization and neuro, especially that ventral vagal and just opening up the, the tissue in there. Additionally, in the cranium, we'll go into uh, some of the main 3D, if you will, our primary anatomical restrictions that lead to PTSD and sympathetic dominance. So we'll be working with the amygdala, hypothalamus, and then down the HPA axis. Anyway, let's get to the distal aspect, which will be uh, further along in the class. Uh, some of the things to keep in mind as a general rule, not an exhaustive rule, is, uh, let me get a laser on this, is that to be effective on the distal leg, not assessing, but generally speaking, you need to have worked through the core, uh, primarily opening up the kale, the heart, the lungs, and all of the deeper holding patterns that hold that whole complex in the sling apparatus of the leg, and especially subclavian, because almost all the blood flow is going to come right back into that baby as well, subclavian vein. Um, so significant work to clear the, the, the whole leg, the upper leg, and even the lower cervicals below, before you even think about going below the elbow is generally effective. Two. Any significant neural or vascular spasm below the knee as a finding as just um, clinical practice usually indicate at least a grade one lesion. Um, lesions in the soft tissue and deep or superficial um, uh, tendons there for sure and other issues down below. That's almost always what you're going to see correlated with that. Um, then, but I would still say the primary causation in anything below the knee, generally, majority of it, is going to be dorsal restrictions emanating up above in for trauma patterns and other dysfunctions that are broader, and they work their way down. When they hit the knee, over time, you can watch a for trauma pattern restrict that scapula, the whole foreleg apparatus, whether it's cranial or caudal or both. What you'll find is that you'll start looking at the spasms in the soft tissue, and when they get below the elbow, you watch it, and, and they tend to go uh, more to the front of the leg and or to the caudal leg, and those have different structures that you're going to work with, tend to be those two patterns. The leg tends to divide itself that way, dysfunctionally anyway. Um, Anyway, what you're going to find is you'll find the restriction go down the leg, and um, once it hits the knee, it's usually getting ready for a, um, a tendon injury and, and so forth. Third thing, which I just alluded to, there are primarily two vascular neural routes through the forearm that mobilize quite well. And uh, when I get to the knee after I've mobilized the um, carpal bones in there and I got that knee joint working pretty well, I work Chopar almost as a primary technique, especially all the way down into the coffin bone, all the way to P3. So that's the one. So here's a look at one of the, not all, but one of the primary venous routes. It'll also primarily be the arterial route. There really isn't a broad um, counterindication to doing arteries before veins. Find out which is the primary. Usually it's going to be veins. Uh, one thing I will note is you must get that subclavian. They're calling it brachiocephalic trunk here. Get that subclavian before you drain anything, okay? Um, again, get the subclavian before you, you really run anything. Vascular-wise, as a general rule, this is really what I want to show you. You pick, pick up the blood in a nonspecific manner if you want to, but primarily you can run down through this median vein in this trajectory. There's an ulnar area here. Keep that in mind. Up behind the elbow that tends to get the bigger, broader flexor right over here. Okay. Again, when you get vascular spasms below the knee, suspect 
um, other types of damage and, and lesions down in here in grade one in particular. Chopar will locate it to the millimeter at where it is, and then you can palpate it and it'll light up for you. There is another route, and I'll show you in another slide in a minute, and it's kind of an odd one to pick up and mobilize, and that is um, the cephalic vein. And so it's draining a large portion of the front of the leg and the median leg here. And what that, the, if you're a blood vessel, it comes up in this manner. And it's very interesting, it comes all the way up through here. So it can cause dysfunction along the, the uh, cranial border of the front of the chest. And then it dumps right back into the, the juggler. So once again, it dumps back into the juggler that way. So that's kind of a different one to mobilize. Let's go look at that. It's right here, cephalic vein. Here's the juggler it dumps back in like so. So to mobilize that, you're kind of rotating your hand in a 180 right here. Well, a 270, I guess you would say. So that's the other one. Another look coming down into the fetlock, the basic feel pattern that you're gonna see. Here's more of the median or the ulnar. This is the secondary route in here that I would take on the posterior or the caudal side of the arm, that will pick up almost all aspects of that area. These are more problematic, more painful, especially this ulnar area. Ulnar is extremely painful when, at, when um, restricted. Neuro, neurologically, okay? What you're gonna usually see, the brachial plexus is probably not the best picture of that. You're gonna see two routes going back to that. More of the radial nerve, Yes, the medial nerve's there, but the radial nerve route, and it comes over the forearm or the ulnar nerve. There are others, but primarily that'll get you there. That ulnar nerve is a quite mobilizing, quite strong. It runs right behind the elbow. Um, Dr. Golob has a technique he calls where you put your arm behind the elbow and you um, pluck the guitar string. And literally, you're plucking that nerve, and if it's reactive, it's going to be really reactive. So let's look again. So as you look at the brachial plexus here, you basically, after you've mobilized, ideally, they're going back to core mobilization. You have rock and glide of the spinal cord through here, okay? At that point, take the off ramps. Those off ramps are up in the cervical and into T1, 2, 3. Pick the one that's most restrictive. Usually it's gonna be this radial, radial nerve coming down in here. Run it down, and if it's still reactive below the knee, you know you have something more involved. If it kind of stops here, you know you're working your way down the knee with restrictions up in here. The other one will fly across this way deeply on the inside of the leg. You can pick it up with your hand here. Remember osteopathically, once you can pick up a nerve and know how to intentionally engage tissue at depth, the world changes. That ulnar nerve runs right around that elbow like that and down. So that's going to do most of your work there. Okay. So here's a Buddhist picture. Look at the way you pick up the brachial plexus. Okay. Let's go back one more time. That'll work. Um, and again, this, this complex here, look at the vascular tends to draw with it or the frontal area here. So I hope that's been insightful for you and um, look forward to meeting you in class.